Ma'am, can you uh, see the screen? Oh. Yes, I can see. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Aydin Emnishan, a student of Super Kids July Batch 2. So this is my open exploration topic, evolution of the Earth. The topics that I will be covering in this presentation are the Milky Way, the solar system, how the Earth was formed, Earth's natural satellite, the moon, how the moon was formed and evolution of the Earth. The Milky Way. So the first, uh, the first thing you need to know about the Milky Way is that you can see in the picture, right? The Milky Way ha is spiral. So the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy that is part of the local group of galaxies, which includes over 54 other galaxies. It is estimated to be around 13.6 billion years old and contains billions of stars, planets, and other objects in the in space. The Milky Way is shaped like a disk, like in the picture, you could see a disk and has a bulge in the center um, and uh, those spiral arms extending out of it. You can see those uh, lines, curved lines, right? Those are spiral arms. So uh, also the Milky Way is, uh, is, the Milky Way is also home to a supermassive black hole in the center, which has a mass equivalent to Four, around 4 million suns. So the next topic we need to know about the Milky Way is how it was formed. The Milky Way galaxy, like I said before, is thought to have formed around 13.6 billion years ago, shortly after the Big Bang. It is believed that <clears throat> the Milky Way there was a gradual pro the milk the making of the Milky Way was a gradual process that took over billions of years. One key process that became uh, that was contributed uh, one key process that contributed to the formation of the Milky Way was the accretion of gas and dust. Gas and dust. As these materials came together, they began to collapse under their own gravity forming dense clouds that eventually gave rise to stars and planets. So the next one is that uh, you all, I hope all of you know that the, the solar system is in the Milky Way. So if you don't, it is in the Milky Way. So the solar system uh, is in one of those spiral arms I explained earlier. So the in detail, spiral arms are one of the most distinctive features in, of the Milky Way galaxy. They are long uh, in the picture. Uh, they are long like in the picture and curved structures that extend out from the center of the galaxy and are composed of gas, dust and stars. Like you can see little tiny dots in the picture. So yeah, those are the stars. Scientists believe that the spiral arms are formed by a combination of gravitational forces uh, and density waves. As gas and dust move throughout the galaxy, they are pulled towards areas of higher gravitational attraction, which causes them to clump together and form stars. So those newly formed stars uh, then uh, emit radiation and so um, and stellar winds that push against the uh, surrounding gas and dust, creating a wave-like structure, and thus that gives rise to the spiral arms. Our solar system is located in one of these spiral arms. And that spiral arm is called the Orion arm. Next is the solar system. Now in this, the formation of the solar system, the first thing we need to know is the formation of the solar system. 
The formation of the solar system began about 4.6 billion years ago, but, uh, shortly after the Big Bang. Um, as the universe expanded, like, uh, you know, the uh, uh, if you don't know, the universe expands. And those expanding, uh, that uh, expanding is faster, uh, is as fast as the speed of light, which is the most fastest thing in the universe. As the universe expanded and cooled down from the heat of the Big Bang theory, the clouds, clouds of gas and dust began to condense and form stars. Our own star, the sun, was formed uh, from one of these clouds of gas and dust. The leftover material from the clouds of gas and dust formed the planets of our solar system. So this process is known as accretion, when small particles collide and stick together to form larger bodies. Structure of the next topic we need to know about the solar system is structure of the solar system. So the solar system is a vast and complex system that consists of the sun, eight planets, dwarf planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and other celestial bodies. At the center of the solar system, you have the sun, which I hope everybody knows, which is a massive ball of plasma that provides light and heat to all planets. The eight planets in the solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, each with its unique characteristics. Next, we need to know about Earth in the solar system. So uh, everybody knows that Earth is in the solar system, right? So the Earth is the third planet from the sun. The first planet is Mercury and the second planet is Venus. Then, um, uh, and the only known planet to support life. It has a diameter approximately of 12,742 kilometers. Yeah, and a mass of 5.97 multiplied by 10 to the 24th power kilograms. By you might be wondering, what is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th power kilograms? So imagine a one with 24 zeros. That is 10 to the 24th power. And multiply that with 5.97. That is how much kilograms, that is how much weight, that is how much kilograms the Earth is. So the planet's atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen that we breathe, and trace amounts of other gases such as carbon dioxide and methane. The ge geology of the Earth is very complex and diverse with a variety of landforms, including mountains, valleys, plains, and oceans. The planet's surface is consistently changing due to tectonic activity, uh, erosion, and other natural, uh, natural processes. Position of the Earth in the solar system is also unique, as it is located in the habitable zone, where, tem where temperatures are suitable for liquid water to exist on the surface. So uh, we know we know where, uh, we don't know any other planets which supports life. Yeah. So the Earth is the only planet, as far as we know, that supports life. So next, the, uh, now let's explore. Let's have some fun. Now the link down uh, this link that you see is a uh, is a preview of the solar system that you can explore and it is made by nasa so okay. so this is what it is so you can scroll and you can see what are the planets you can scroll. 
out of the solar system and you can see the uh, stars and if you scroll really far you can see the milky way yeah now let's get back to the presentation now next topic is how the earth was formed first one is accretion and differentiation the first thing we need to do is accretion and differentiation i uh, explained accretion if you uh, if you forgot it is um, when small particles collide and stick together gradually forming larger and larger bodies through a process called accretion yeah over time, these bodies grew into planetesimals, which are basically small planets, and which eventually became uh, became the planets we know today. Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago through this process of accretion. As Earth continued to grow, it began to differentiate into distinct layers. This occurred as heavier material sank into uh, to the bottom uh, towards the center uh, of the planet due to gravity while lighter materials rose towards the surface the result was the formation of the earth's layers the dense core the mantle and the crust this process of differentiation also led to the creation of Earth's magnetic field, which protects us from harmful solar ra radiation. Now, next is the Hadean Ian. The Hadean uh, Ian. I'm pretty sure nobody ever heard of this. If you have, not nah, you. The so the Hadean Ian is a period of the Earth's history which lasted from about 4.6 to 4 billion years ago. During this time, the Earth was bombarded by countless asteroids and comets, resulting in intense, very high heat and frequent impacts. Um, every day had impacts. These conditions had a major impact on the formation of Earth's crust and atmosphere. One of the significant effects of the Hadean Ian was the formation of the Earth's first crust. The intense heat uh, caused by the impacts melted the surface of the Earth, uh, uh, creating a magma ocean. So magma is from the mantle. If you know what the mantle is, it is a layer. It is a layer of the Earth. Uh, basically like lava but it's uh, similar to it as the earth cooled the magma solidified into a thin crust over time volcanoes and other geological processes added to this crust eventually forming the continents we know today the formation of the moon is which witnessed in the hadian year and we will get to this uh, topic later the the, uh, the next topic is the Archean year. Another year. During the Archean year, life on Earth began to take uh, take shape. Simple, singular celled organisms like bacteria and archaea emerged, creating oxygen as a byproduct of their metabolical processes. Over, over time, these early life forms change the composition of the Earth's atmosphere. And um, and there in uh, and there was a lot of carbon dioxide that time because of the volcanoes. But now, but the, at the Archean Eon, the, uh, uh, the bacteria and archaea crea uh, created oxygen, the pumped oxygen to the surface of the Earth and uh, then eventually to the atmosphere and transformed the mostly carbon dioxide rich environment to one with more oxygen this shift paved uh, the way 
for the emergence of more complex life forms in the future. The uh, the proto protozoic eon. The protozoic eon spanning from 2.5 billion years, well, 2.5 billion to 541 million years ago. Was it was a time of great chance and innovation on Earth. During the this period, the supercontinent of Rodinia formed and later broke apart, leading to the emergence of new land masses and diverse and diversification of life forms. One of the most significant uh, developments in the Proterozoic Eon was the emergence of complex life forms, multicellular organisms, including the first animals and multicellular organisms. I guess this period had a lot of evolution and many new species, species as well as the development of um, food chains. The next one, a uh, Phanerozoic Eon. The Phanerozoic Eon is the most recent Eon in Earth's history, spanning from approximately 541 million years ago to the present day. This Eon is ca ca characterized by the diversification of life and formation of the continents as we know them today. Um, now, uh, during the early part of the Phanerozoic Eon, life on Earth was dominated by simple organisms such as algae and bacteria. However, over time, uh, the more complex life forms evolved, including fish, plants, and even actually mammals. The, the development of these new species are facilitated by a variety of factors, including changes in climate and emergence of ecosystems. Mm. Ecosystems. Now we get to Earth's natural satellite, the moon. The moon is the fifth largest moon in the solar system. Earth's moon is the only place beyond Earth where humans have gone and set foot. Uh, so the first man to go on mo the moon was Neil Armstrong. Does anybody know that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Now we're going to tell how the moon was formed. So billions of years ago, a version of the Earth like I said, there was a, a version of the Earth that looks very different than the one we live uh, on today. Was hit by an object about the size of Mars. It was a newly born planet called Thea. And out of that collision, the moon was formed from the debris uh, from the debris to a ring uh, of the uh, to a ring, and from that ring the moon was formed. How exactly that formation occurred is a scientific puzzle researchers have studied for de decades without a conclusive answer. Now, uh, this is a video explanation of how the moon was formed by a supercomputer by NASA. This is one of the most high, uh, high resolution images by how the moon was formed. Can you hear? No, we can't hear. Oh, no, we can't hear. Uh, wait a minute. 
So you can read the subtitles. The uh, no, uh, this is just the news. Uh, so the ideal, uh, you can uh, when you are sharing, you can on the sound option. Okay, computer sound, you can on and share it. Okay. Okay. When you are sharing, do you like that? Uh, actually, there is no. Uh, this is just the uh, subtitles. This is there. The sound is only the music. Ah, then no problem, dear. You just read read the subtitles. So this new supercomputer a simulation shows how the moon was formed in just a few hours. It is one of the highest resolution images of the moon's formation. So you, uh, so uh, the smaller planet is Theia. Uh, in the simulation, it starts with the collision of a mass a size object. Like I explained, uh, its name is Theia. And debris from the impact forms into two bodies. And the smaller of the two will become the moon. So you can see it is so slow down. Gravity the larger body propels the smaller body forward. And it launches into a wide and stable orbit. The simulation opens up new possibilities for the moons and the show. Actually, this is all a theory. And it will help researchers better understand uh, the intertwined history of the Earth and the moon. So it is made by NASA. Um, I have a question. Okay, what is it? Um, how long did it take for the moon to be formed? Uh, like uh, it was only formed a few thousand years. A few thousand years. We we're not sure about this because this is a theory, but. Uh, but uh, some be scientists uh, researchers say that it is a few thousand years. Okay. Okay. Now let's get back to the presentation. So eight need to know things about the moon. First one is bring a space uh, suit. The moon has a very thin and thin tenuous atmosphere called an exosphere. It is not breathable because there is no oxygen in the moon. Many visitors, more than 105 robotic spacecrafts have been launched to explore the moon. It is the only celestial body beyond Earth so far visited by human beings. Moonwalkers, Apollo astronauts brought back a to total of 842 pounds. 382 kilograms of lunar rocks and soil to the earth. We are still studying them. Potential for life. The moon's weak atmosphere and its lack of liquid water cannot support life as we know it. So a small companion. If you ever uh, set, uh, set a single green pea next to a US nickel, you pretty, uh, you'd have a pretty good idea of how the size of the moon compared to Earth. Constant compa companion. The moon is Earth's only natural satellite. It goes around the Earth at a distance of, of about 283, 80, 200, uh, 200, 239,000 miles, which is 385,000 ki kilometers. Locked up. The Earth and the moon are tidally locked. Their rotations are so in sync that we can only see one side of, of the moon. Humans did not see the lunar far side until a Soviet spacecraft flew past in 1959. Uh, did anyone know this locked up fact? Did anyone know this locked up? Okay. If anybody know about it, you can see, okay. You can stand uh, can stand on it. Uh, the moon has a solid, rocky surface, cratered and pitted uh, from impacts by asteroids. 
meteorites and comets. So the next evolution of life on Earth. Uh, the origin of life on Earth stands as one of the great mysteries of science. Various answers have uh, have been proposed, all of which remain unverified. To find out uh, if we are alone in the galaxy, we need to uh, we need to we will need to better understand what geochemical conditions are natured for the first form form. What water, chemistry, and temperature cycles fostered the chemical reactions that allowed life to emerge on our planet? Because life arose in uh, in the largely unknown surface conditions uh, of Earth's early history. Answering these and uh, um, other questions remains a challenge. Evolution of life on Earth. First thing we need to know is how the water came in on Earth. So meteorites and waters. 3.9 billion years ago. And there are still uh, meteorites crashing into Earth. And the debris left over from the solar system formation. And there were strange, there were strange crystals inside those meteorites. And each and they looked like um, grains of salt that you would put on your French fries. But uh, inside or uh, inside them, there were minute amounts of water, only a little amount of water. And when they crashed uh, they, from the Earth's heat, they melted down and became uh, water. After uh, two, 20 million years of the Earth, bombarded with asteroids that contained crystals with minute amounts of water ponds uh, pools of water uh, pools of water grows and grows until the earth is covered with waters but not only wa wa water uh, not only the water covered the earth but there are tiny tiny islands that came out of nowhere and uh, um, those uh, islands were formed by uh, volcanic eruptions. The volcanoes rose out of the ground and erupted, and the lava cooled down and became rock. And then islands were formed. Okay. Now the next one is um, uh, how the minerals got to Earth. Now meteorites and minerals. Meteors have been raining down since plan since the planet's formation, but now 3.8 uh, but in the, uh, but before 3.8 billion years ago, the asteroids have the Earth is in a new phase. Meteorites have already brought water, brought water, but now they're bringing something else. Uh, they are bringing minerals, amino uh, acids, and other primitive materials under the uh, Okay. And uh, they uh, and um, they somehow seep into the in below the Earth's crust into the matter. And man, so. Uh, now we need to know how a life forms. The, min the mineral that the asteroids uh, bring dissolved in the water and seep through the cracks of in the crust, getting hotter and collecting minerals and gases on the way. This, fo this formed a chemical soup, which gradually changed to tower-like structures in the ocean bed. These chemicals and the conditions in the ocean bed to uh, together Created the first life in water, and the process is uh, we still don't know how it did. These are uh, these are uh, single-celled organisms. Uh, uh, these are single-celled organisms. So, next topic is stomatolite and photosynthesis. 
Uh, so you're probably wondering what are stromatolites and uh, you I think uh, some people already know uh, are, what is photosynthesis. Does anybody know what is photosynthesis? Yeah, I know. What is yeah, I know. So photosynthesis yeah. is basically photosynthesis is the process that it is happen in the leaves of the uh, like a plant. So photosynthesis is uh, helps to make food, uh, prepare food to eat, like uh, for that um, what? plant, for that plant. Yeah, uh, that is correct. Uh, but uh, but then we uh, there were mountains of living bacteria in the ocean, but they came together and formed mountains. Of, and these bacterial colonies called are called a stromatolite. Um, as you uh, and the these bacteria turn sunlight into food, the magical process of photosynthesis, like you said. They use the power of sunlight to transform carbon dioxide and water into glucose. A glucose is a simple form of water. It's a simple form of sugar and similar to the stuff we put in our coffee. Um, underwater, the stromatolites uh, slowly fill the oceans with oxygen. The oxygen raises to the atmosphere and transform the atmosphere uh, as uh, as I explained be uh, before the presentation. When we take our next breath, we're giving we're giving thanks to these colonies of ancient bacteria. Now, uh, Tect uh, tectonic movements and the formation of Rodinia. So you're probably wondering what is Rodinia? So I will explain it. first. Uh, let's think of uh, tectonic movements. Over, uh, over millions of years, we can see something is rearranging in the islands hidden beneath the ocean. The Earth's crust is broken into vast plates and they are get uh, and they are moving um, those are tectonic movements. They are moving um, islands to um, to form a supercontinent called Rodinia. Now, in on Earth, at uh, that time, it was 30 degrees Celsius. And the days were 18 hours long. So, when the beginning of the Earth, uh, it was really spinning really fast. So, days were like six hours, eight hours long. But now, Earth has evolved and it is 18 hours long. After the formation of Rodinia, a plate tectonic, activi te uh, tectonic activity activities continue and volcano volcanic eruptions pump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and creates acid rain. The rock ac uh, rocks uh, uh, absorb the carbon dioxide and there is not enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to trap the sun's heat. The temperature drops to minus 50 degrees. Ice sheets from the poles uh, are um, are covering the earth now. Now, uh, uh, covering the earth, and they are moving up away from the uh, polar regions and meet and are going to meet into the and in the equator. So they meet. It and now the earth is covered uh, with a blanket of ice and the ice reflects the sunlight. So, yeah. After the uh, surface is filled with ice, there is no rock to uh, absorb carbon dioxide. And the atmosphere is getting filled with uh, carbon dioxide from the volcanic eruptions. Now the earth is able to trap the sun's heat and ice starts melting which creates a, a new chemical rich in oxygen, hydrogen peroxide. So now the there are uh, after thousands and millions of years, thousands of years, um, the the sunlight finally gets through and melts the ice. 
and which uh, creates a new chemical rich in oxygen, which is called hydrogen peroxide. He or H2O2. Uh, they break and release large amounts of oxygen. Now the next one is we. Multicellular organisms and Cambrian explosion. Uh, so the high the high um, oxygen in the atmosphere uh, created the most significant event in evolution ev ev evolution of life called the Cambrian evolution. It resulted in the formation of diverse forms of life. The first uh, there are trilobites. Trilobites were a diverse group of anthropods that were the dominant marine animals of the Cambrian period. They had a hard exoskeleton and segmented bodies, and they began uh, and they came in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Next is brachiopods. Brachiopods are marine animals that have a shell made up of two valves. They are filled. Uh, they are filter feeders and are still found in the oceans today. Beneath the waves, there are already tens of thousands of plants and animal species, and the advance of life seems unstoppable. Life on land 460 million years ago. The plates have moved again, and below lies a new continent. The continent is Gondwana. Gond uh, Gondwana. Has uh, anybody heard of the term Gondwana? Has anybody heard of Gondwana? Okay, and it's still 30 degrees Celsius. Oxygen levels are close to those in which we live on that, uh, the left. The, the land should be covered with plants and plants crawling with creatures, but there are not much there. Besides a few patches of algae. The old, um, the old, uh, algae. Now there is only the ozone layer. There is only one explanation because of there are no uh, creatures or plants uh, in the um, land. There are only algae. Mm. The ozone layer. Uh, the land is devoid of life because of the radiation of, uh, from the sun. The, so the only reason is because of the uh, irradiation of the sun. Now, how do we live uh, now? Yeah, there is not so much radiation. Seems out that there are, uh, when oxygen mixes with sunlight, it forms a new chemical called ozone. And the ozone uh, in the atmosphere after a thousands and like one or two million years, the ozone layer forms and protects the, uh, protects the earth from the radiation. Earth from the radiation. And now it's like a blanket covering the earth, uh, protecting the earth. Uh, around the planet, this, uh, the ozone layer gets thicker and stops more radiation from reaching the earth's surface. Without this layer, life on land simply wouldn't exist. The life on uh, land plants and thick talc. Now you're probably wondering what is thick talc? Now life on uh, so now the earth is shielded with radiation. She is uh, shielded from the radiation from the sun, right? Now life blossoms. First they were uh, uh, first they were algae when still the radiation was there. Now there are mossy lumps and the first land plants. They're pumping out even more oxygen. Levels uh, 350 is uh, 375 million years ago, a strange fish called Tiktaalik. Uh, Tiktaalik, it's uh, uh, Tiktaalik uh, was swimming. Its neck allows itself to ra raise itself up and it used its fins as legs and moved out of the water. 
and they found habitat inland. Subsequently, other organisms evolved inland. That uh, um, evolved inland. Now, uh, when the tiktalic uh, used its fins as legs, and it could raise itself up with its neck. So, uh, so it raised up, and after a few thousand or hundred years, uh, the tiktalic evolved, and it was the first animal to be on land. Now, we go to extinctions. The first mass extinction the Earth has seen after the formation of the life. This was the biggest ex extinction in the history of the Earth. This was a result of the plate tectonic movements, which were called Siberian eruptions. First, it seemed locally, but it affected globally. The emission of CO2 increased the uh, temperature and all vegetation died. The heat increased in the ocean and organisms were deprived of oxygen, which led to the, their extinction. Ocean turned to pink color because of pink algae. Now, uh, uh, has anybody heard of Pangaea? So, supercontinent Pangaea, has anybody heard of it? Yeah, I have. Okay, uh, do you know what Pangaea is? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a supercontinent, right? Yeah, it is. It is. So yeah. the result of the eruptions created one supercontinent called Pangaea, and a handful of reptiles as some dinosaurs. So now it is age of reptiles. So I think you've all been waiting for this moment. Uh, the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs have repopulated the earth, but no species contained this restless volatile planet. The Earth's plates are on move again. 190 million years ago, the great supercontinent of Pangaea breaks up. A vast lap of land has broken away, and it creates a chasm, and uh, this fills with the new uh, ocean called the te uh, Texas. Now, the dinosaurs are now, they are unbeatable. Uh, compared to anything on Earth, but on Earth, not from space or other planets. Now it is extinction of dinosaurs. An asteroid, sub, uh, an asteroid about 10 kilometers across and bigger than Mount Everest is traveling at over 70,000 kilometers, an hour straight towards the Earth, an hour straight towards the Earth. The impact was very big, and from the moment Earth was attacked from bodies in every direction, earthquakes sh sh shake the ground and tsunamis better uh, the coasts, but on one, but the onslaught has only just begun. The plume of mountain rock and dust spreads out and engulfs the planet. Uh, the entire sky is acting like a giant sunlit. The Earth's surface heats up to 275 degrees. Vegetation begins to spontaneously ignite. Even months after the impact, smoke, uh, smoke and ash still block out the sun's rays, with less sunlight plants died, and the animals that eat them starve. Against this onslaught, it's hard to see that how anything can survive. The dinosaurs' 165 million years reign is over. But it's not done yet. How, how do you think we fought? And we formed after the extinction of dinosaurs. Um, now the dinosaurs are out of the way. Even before the dinosaurs, mammals were there. And mammals were hiding in the ground. And so the meteorite crash did not uh, impact them. And now the dinosaurs are out of the way. They can finally evolve. After the extinction of dinosaurs, mammals began to diversify and evolve into a wide range of different species. 
Some of these early mammals were still were small and rodent-like, while others were larger and more fer fer ferocious. Over time, mammals came to dominate the earth, filling econo ecological niches awakened by the dinosaurs. They evolved adaptations that allowed them to thrive. In a variety of environments, from the ocean to the skies to the forests and grasslands. Um, so, uh, does uh, can anybody tell me um, a few types of water mammals? Mammals that go in water? Uh, dolphins. Yeah. Sharks. Sharks. Sharks are not mammals. Yeah, I think they are whales. Yeah, whales. Yeah, whales. Yeah, they are mammals. Sharks are mammals. Yeah. Uh, seahorse. Yeah, that. Uh, okay. Yes. Now the human race. Finally, the humans come. We come. Uh, humans, like all organisms, evolved over millions of years through a process of natural selection. Our earliest ancestors were small, bipedal primates that lived in Africa for more than six billion years ago. Over time, these uh, uh, early um, humans developed larger brains and more sophisticated tools, eventually giving rise to the Homo genus, which include modern humans. One of the key factors that uh, allowed humans to dominate was our ability to adapt to changing environments. Unlike other animals, uh, we were adapted to modify our surroundings, our changing environment. Unlike uh, through, whether it's through agriculture, technology or other means, this has allowed us to spread across the globe and thrive in a wide range of habitats, from frozen tundra to the scorching desert. Now, the now, uh, so I hope everybody know about the humans, right? Now let's go to the future of the Earth. As we look towards the future of our planet, it's important to consider the potential scenarios and outcomes based on the current trends and scientific research. The reality is that if we continue down our current path, we will be facing some serious consequences. From rising sea levels to the most extreme weather patterns, the effects of climate change are already being felt around the world, but it's not all doom and gloom. We, uh, there are steps that we can take to um uh, we uh, there are steps that we can take to um that we can take to stop these impacts and help shape a better better future for ourselves and future generations by investing in renewable ener energy reducing our carbon footprint by carbon footprint uh, you mean releasing carbon dioxide from the factories and protecting our natural resources. We can work towards a more sustainable future. It won't be easy for the challenge we must rise if we want to ensure the health and prosperity of the planet. The end of the presentation. As we come to the end of the presentation, it is important to remember the incredible journey that our planet has been on. For its formation billions of years ago to the rise of the humans and challenges that we face today. Earth has undergone remarkable transformations, but with these changes comes responsibilities. We must take action to protect the planet and its ecosystems for future generations, whether it's reducing the carbon footprint, uh, supporting conservation efforts or advocating for policies that prioritize the environment. Each of us can make a difference. So let's take inspiration from the past and use it to shape a better future for our planet and all its inhabitants. Is now it's a time for Q&A. 
So Thank those who have the doubts, those who want to ask questions, you can ask right now. I have a question. What is it? One by one. The first, can I ask? Yeah. So my question is, in the Milky Way or in the um, like in the space, is there any planets or like uh, like anything that that how life exists? Is there any planets? Uh, like we, uh, there are po the possibilities are uh, high, but. Um, we still don't know that yet. We, are, uh, we still don't know that. Is, uh, are you talking about is there any aliens out there? <laughs> no, no. Like, uh, is there any uh, life exists? Life? Uh, exists. Life what? Life, like, life exists on, like, a there are no life. Uh, we don't know if there are life or not. We just, uh, we are still exploring, but the chances are high. Okay, I so don't think it's in the Milky Way. I think it's outside from other galaxies. It could be anywhere. So I have one more question. Okay, what is it? So my question is, uh, the most of the people and most of the videos are saying, like, uh, a, a part of the sun burst, and in that part of the sun, uh, that is made, like, that causes... Uh, like earth is that true uh, i don't understand uh, what did you say so i will explain so everybody is saying like the uh, on the ancient period the sun burst and a part of that sun like a part of the core you mean the core yeah yeah uh, it's actually a theory we don't it, know it it is not true Maybe it is. It's a theory. Okay. It it's believed that uh, the sun will run out of fuel and it will become a red giant and explode and become a white dwarf from the okay. core. Uh, I I have one more question. That is my uh, last question. Can I ask? Okay. So my question is, uh, the uh, everyone is sorry, the pupils uh. The people find like uh, the uh, there is yeah. a earth and there is in out of the earth there is so many galaxies and so many suns. So how can human like uh, find that thing? Uh, from telescopes, uh, from the space telescopes, they can find find out. But it will take a lot of years to take one single picture because it's very far away and light. Uh, if it's one light year, it will take a uh like a year so but in telescope in telescopes we can only find that uh that uh like that planet uh, planet is uh axis so but we all know in the uh, in the jupiter there is like we can't go there and in the mars we can't go there but uh how can human like find that like that in that in that the planet there is oxygen and in, in in another planet there is not oxygen like that um uh, they are still exploring they are still exploring but the uh, what in with the gas giants there there is only a, a solid hard core and other gases so we cannot stay on it because we'll just sink down and fall no no i'm saying how human find that uh, uh space rovers I think space rovers and Venus has a very uh, hot temperature and Mercury too, but uh, space rovers are still studying Mars. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Nim? Wait, 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 wait. Like. When the when when the Earth was created first, was it like a magma ball or something? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it was really hot because of the collisions and the accretions. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I I have another question. 
Okay. So my question is, yeah, everyone is saying, not everyone, like uh, I saw like okay. a video. So in that video, I, um, I got that a video. That, that is, video is actually a theory that I showed. Okay, so that is not a, like a true. It, uh, we don't know if it's true or not, but some scientists believe that. Okay, so my, uh, so my question is like uh, uh, in the ancient period, there is uh, like uh, the, the dinosaurs are uh, lived, right? So, yeah. So, uh, so do you know uh, before that the dinosaurs living, but what that happened like uh, uh, uh how they got extinct is also a theory there are multiple theories everything is a theory theory except for the dinosaurs we know that they exist because of the fossils but we don't know how they are like the tyrannosaurus rex uh, we don't know the exact shape we just uh, put a few fossils together and voila we got it okay Any other questions? No? Okay, there are no other questions. Sorry. Yeah, I think no more questions, I guess. Hey, I, I have a question. Can I ask? Can I ask? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the how, how the land is formed? Is it formed by the ocean? Uh, how the land was formed? Yeah. Yeah, uh, when the asteroids uh, hit, it was uh, when the Earth started uh, cooling down, a small crust came, a small crust came. When the magma cooled down, a, a small crust came. Yeah. Okay, so... So I after millions of years, they, uh, there were, uh, it was solidified. So, I have one more question, that is, like uh, that Google is saying and Google and other tools are saying like the most of the oxygens are formed are forming by the like in the ocean. Is that true? Uh, yeah, that is true. From st uh, stromatolites, uh, groups of bacteria, they, they do photosynthesis and they pump out oxygen to the surface of the earth and eventually to the atmosphere. Okay. Any other questions? I don't think so. Any other questions? If you don't have any question, I didn't, you can ask a question, my dear. And one more thing, Nishana ma'am and Amira ma'am are here, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so you people can also fill yes, the evaluation yeah. sheet. So you people can also fill the evaluation sheet. Okay. I will share it. So, can anybody tell what is what was the okay. second supercontinent? Shahma, are you here? Just one second, Aydin. Shahma, are you here? Shahma? No. Shahma, you also have to fill the evaluation sheet, okay? It's already there in the chat box. And for Nishana, ma'am, and Amira, ma'am, I am sending it again in the chat box. Or I will send it personally to you. You can send me okay, in WhatsApp, ma'am. Ma WhatsApp. Can you send me in WhatsApp? Yeah. Because, yeah, to me also, uh, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sure, sure. Chat box was not available for me. So, I think I, I have one more question. Okay, what is it? Uh, <clears throat> you feel that news, right? Like, the in the Africa, the land is like... Um, uh, uh, what we say like that, uh, like... Uh, the land is... We can have two parts in Africa. Did you hear that news? Uh, no, I did not. So the I land is what in Africa? I did not hear it correctly. What uh, the land is? What? So the land is like uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, 
like the, the land is uh, become the land is going to become two parts like the land is uh, that means after like millions of years. Like the land is going to crash apart. Uh, what? Yeah. Like that is after right. millions of years, right? No, no, no. No, on our air, like now. Oh, they built a canal. Uh, I... uh, what? The land is becoming in two, you said. Yeah, into like a two parts, like a like a crack. In Africa. Yeah. I did not get that news. So I hear that news. That's why I say. Yeah, oh, you can explain you about it, I guess. You mean, you mean the what? canal? What? You mean the canal from a uh, uh, from Asia to Africa? Maybe the yeah. Suez Canal. Maybe yeah. Okay, so there is no more questions. So, Aydin, it was a nice session, Aydin. I think you researched well and your presentation interacted well. Everything was really good. Thank you. Okay, so Shahma, Nishana ma'am and Amira ma'am, please fill the evaluation sheet. Okay, I did. So tomorrow you can join for the open exploration of our quiz and add. Them. Okay. All of you give a good clap to Raiden because he did a good job. No, all of you please give a good clap to him. He deserves it. Thank you. Yes, Aiden. Ow, my hand. So, so thank you so much, Aiden. We'll fill the evaluation sheet okay. and you can leave, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. So Shahma, thank you so much, Shahma. Once you fill the evaluation sheet, then you can leave, my dear. Yes, what about cosmos medal? Can we leave? I think cosmos.